All right, we are out on the Roveron Coulter Luxury. This is, uh, one, this is the range test, and two, Roveron is a new brand from Mini Motors. So this is the same company that manufactures and sells the Dualtron line of scooters. So, you know, I, I had a Dualtron Victor. I still have it, and I really liked it. And, excuse me. So this is that same, it's gonna have a lot of similar characteristics. So just a quick overview. This is a $2,800 scooter. It's, uh, it's supposed to have a top speed of 45 miles an hour. I've only been out on one ride on it, um, but so far I, I really, really like it. There's a lot to like here and I'll talk about it as I ride. So this is kind of range test plus first impressions. <laughs> So this is a minimum range test, meaning that I'm going to be riding basically as fast as I possibly can on this thing in order to see what the minimum range you can get is. Um, I have, so I initially maxed out the P settings. Usually I like to ride in the highest mode possible, but um, I don't think this is a sine wave controller because when I turned the acceleration start all the way up, because it's like zero to five, zero being the highest, it gives it starts it at two, which felt not aggressive enough for me, and so I went to zero, which is the most aggressive, and it was just a little bit too aggressive. Like it, it didn't make a lot of. Maybe one is too aggressive too, you hear all the wheel spinning, but zero was just a little bit too aggressive to feel like comfortable with. It's one of those things where you could get used to it if you used it enough, but this seems to be plenty. So first off, it's a really, really good looking scooter. I mean, it's like really, it's got a very like meaty, beefy feel and look to it. And it has some really cool um, like lights. You know, Mini Motors and Dualtron scooters, they're, they're known for their like, uh, like lights on the stem and lights on the, the body of the scooter. And it's a really like, it really is a luxury scooter. The other thing I really, really like about it so far is it has a huge rear tail for my back foot. Like really, really big. Um, if you've ever watched any of my Dualtron Victor reviews or like uh, impressions or any rides, I probably brought up the fact that it doesn't come with a rear tail. And this seems to have gone the complete opposite side of the spectrum. Instead of no tail, it has like the largest tail I've ever seen on electric scooter ever. <laughs> Let's see, I'm gonna go up here and grab a trail. Also, if you are familiar with this channel and don't recognize uh, where I'm riding, I have moved. Um, I talk about it in my uh, Varla Eagle One Pro update video, but you probably, like, you may have not seen that. And so, yeah, so I moved to California. I'm working full-time for Electric Scooter Guide. And as of recording this, um, I have two full reviews that I've done for them out on their channel. The Roadrunner RS5, which is like a 40 mile an hour scooter with a removable battery, which I really liked. And then the Nami Klima, which right now is my favorite scooter of the year. So go check those out. But yeah, obviously I'm still posting content on this channel. Um, Mini Motors USA sent this out. And so I'm hoping to work with them closely this year on this channel. But but yeah, so back to the scooter. Um, I, I have taken it out for one run or one ride. And one, it's a ton of fun. And two, I, I did a couple like top speed pulls just out of curiosity. 
and it looks like it gets up to 40 pretty easily. I think it's supposed to get be a 45 mile an hour scooter. So I'm gonna have to do some actual speed tests to see if it can, you know, do that. But it has tubeless tires, which is amazing. Um, Cause on my Victor, I ended up switching the tube tires that come on that for tubeless tires. Actually these exact same ones. I think these tubeless tires were originally on the Dualtron 3. And they've got the classic like EY3 display. I always call it an eye display, but you know, EY3 technically I think is the name. And uh, yeah, so I mean, I really like trigger throttles. Um, but you, I've been seeing more and more high-end scooters with like the, the thumb throttle, like the horizontal thumb throttle, which is also uh, a style of throttle that I'm, I'm starting to like. But yeah, I mean, this thing can really, can really open up. It, it hits a display speed of 40 pretty easily, 42, 44, 43. So it hit 44 displayed, which is probably around 42 actual. I'm actually gonna jump over here. The other thing that's really cool about um, this area where I live is they have like gravel trails on the side of all the paved trails presumably for gravel bikes. But uh, it's nice because you can kind of like get a little taste of like off-roading. I mean, it's like not really off-roading, but you know. And uh, speaking of, the suspension on this is, is pretty unique. It's got the like the four, it's got um, two like pistons in front and two in back. So it's kind of similar to the uh, Apollo Phantom in the suspension setup. There's no adjusting, like there's no damping adjustment, but it feels pretty good. It can be a little bouncy sometimes, but not overly so. Like there is a bit of damping in there. It's not just immediately like springboarding back up. Feels good, it feels nice and agile. It's actually not overly heavy. I think you could, like I live on the first floor of my apartment building and I didn't have any issues getting it up and down the stairs. So it's like reasonably portable. It's not like the, the riding platform is nice and big and it's fairly long. So I don't know about fitting it into the trunk of a, like a sedan but it's also not like, you know, it's not the biggest scooter at this price. It definitely is like a very luxurious feeling scooter though. Like you get on it and you feel like the weight and the like the components, like everything is so like solid and quality, which I mean, at almost $3,000 you, you know, you expect that, but. Ton of fun. So it also has a huge battery. It's, uh, gosh, what is it? Like 35 amp hours? I don't know, I'll put the, the, amp, the amp hours on the screen. It's a 60 volt scooter, I believe. So you're looking at like 18, 1900 watt hours. So even at the higher speeds, I think this is going to like do really well range wise. The brakes, the brakes feel pretty good. They're, they're zoom hydraulic. Um, I'm a little partial to nut and very partial to Logan, but we really only see Logan on the, uh, on the Nami scooters and like just the fact that there's hydraulic brakes is like enough for me. Like, it's just really nice. The other thing that they did well was not forcing um, electronic braking on you out of the box. So it came with the electronic braking off. I find that the like the mini motor scooters, the, the electronic braking is just like so grabby. 
And if you have front and rear hydraulic disc brakes, like it, it, you don't really need the, the regen braking. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention is that I also turned off any sort of power save. There's like a power save P setting. I actually am not 100% sure what that even does specifically, but I always test like the bare minimum range. And so in line with that, I set things to zero power save, zero electronic regen braking. So yeah, we'll see how far, how far she goes. Some really, really pretty trails around here. And I'm riding like early afternoon, so there's not a ton of people out here, which is nice, which is what I love. Let's see, other notable features. Uh, the handlebars are like, Mini Motors loves to ship their scooters with folding handlebars, which this has, but it's a little bit different design than we uh, typically see, like especially on the Doltron scooters. Like these, these red things just pull out and it folds down. It's like super simple. There's no like quick release latches or anything. And it kind of like theoretically sounds sketchy to like be able to just like pull this and fold it down, but it's been like super, I mean, super solid. It doesn't feel weird at all. There's no like wiggle in the handlebars. So it's cool design. The other thing is just this logo lights up when you have the like ambient lights on. Looks really nice. I also love the white, what's it called? Glacier white coloring on this. It comes in some funky colors. It has like, um, like a lime green and like an electric blue. But I mean, this glacier color is by far the nicest. The black's pretty cool too, but like, I don't know. You see, I've seen so many black scooters. It's fun to have something a little unique and different. The motors ha also have that really distinctive uh, like mini motor whine to them. It's almost like an engine sound. Like you can, you hear, <laughs> you hear the mini motors, motors and you're like, yep, that's, that's mini motors. <laughs> okay, so this part of the trail is completely new to me. I think I can connect to a paved trail from here, but I'm not sure. That's what I saw on the map. Let me see. Oh, how do I get up there? Oh, whoa. <laughs> Full off-roading. Okay. This is all uncharted territory for me, so kind of fun adventure. This is a bridge. I'll stop and get a bridge picture. I don't know if any of you guys are part of like the e-bike um, subreddit, but like it's like a running joke that everyone takes the pictures of their e-bikes and like PEVs on uh, bridges. So, you know, I'm gonna do the same real quick. Okay, pictures taken. You can go see those over on uh, Instagram, presumably. So they turned out pretty well, so I like them. So I think I'll post them. So yeah, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you know, go check it out. You know, I don't do anything crazy over there. I just like to post pictures and updates on the stuff I'm testing. So you get a little bit of like behind the scenes view into like what scooters I'm actively working on before the reviews come out. So I've gone about eight miles and it still says 80% left. So 
That's pretty good. Even at speed, it has a really nice, wide, floaty feel to it. It's uh, very reminiscent of the Nami Bernie, where you just feel like you have so much space on the platform. You just can float along, and high speed doesn't feel like high speed. Okay, halfway through the range test. Check mileage. 13, 13.3 miles. Okay. So it looked like it's shaping up to be just around like 30 miles of range, which is really good. Cause that's like a minimum range. That's like, cause I'm riding this basically aggressively as I possibly can. And your average speed has a huge effect on, on range. Not to mention I'm in the second highest acceleration mode. Cause even if it does like a little under 30 miles, you could still pretty confidently like squeeze out 40 or more just by reducing your speed by a bit. I think the number is something like five, you get 5% of rain back for every mile an hour slower you ride. So like on this test, if my average speed is like, it's probably gonna be somewhere be between like 25 and 30, maybe closer to 25 because you know, I'm not going full speed the whole time. Like, if you put your range, so theoretically, right, if I average closer to 20 miles an hour, which is like maybe capping your speed at 30, maybe turning down acceleration a little bit, then that should get you an extra, theoretically, an extra like 25% of range. So like an almost extra 10 miles. But I mean, there's a lot of factors, obviously. The other thing to consider is like aerodynamics. Like if I ride like this the whole time, crouch down on the scooter, one, I'm going to be able to go higher average speeds. And two, I'm also gonna be able to get better range. Cause like aerodynamics has a lot to do with uh, like speed and range as well. Same thing with like the top speed runs. Like if I stay standing up for top speed runs, then my top speed is like multiple miles an hour slower than if I crouch down. Okay. 
Battery's running low, but I figured I'd get a little, uh, just, just mix in a little bit of off-road riding before, uh, before the battery died. If the battery does die on this range test, I'll just, uh, I mean, I'll obviously let you know the range at the end. I mean, these definitely are not off-road tires, so. But like, I mean, like light dirt riding like this should be no problem. And I mean, you know, if you're gonna spend the money on a uh, a big old fancy dual motor scooter like this, and like, you know, you might as well take it up some dirt trails. A little off-roading. chunky a little a little bouncy at times but overall not bad very manageable so the gopro died shortly after this but the coulter ended up doing 25.6 miles before the power to the motors began to cut out in a pinch, I probably could have milked another mile out of it just from the short bursts of power it would get on and off. So I can comfortably say that 25 to 30 miles of range is the bare minimum for this scooter, which should be more than enough for anywhere you plan to be riding on a scooter. There's a lot to like in the Coulter Luxury, and so far I'm pleased with how it has felt to ride and the features you get for the price. I will be doing a full review of the scooter, and that should be out in the next couple weeks, so be sure to get subbed to see that when it comes out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.